Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are doing something for you that we have never done before. We're putting out two videos today. Uh, we promised you guys when the Buyer's Guide series started that we were going to do mid-range rods for you. Well, the time has been flying by. Today is actually the last day that you can ground ship a rod and get it in time for Christmas. So we're down to the wire. Right now we're doing casting rods, mid-range casting rods. We're not putting a price tag on this one because mid-range is a huge category. We already did budget friendly for you. We hung at that $200 combo mark and we already did the ultra high end. Now we're capturing everything in the middle. Eight casting rods here that we've got picked out for you. Now this is, what time is it? 6.30 in the morning Eastern right now as this video is coming out. <laughs> so at 11 o'clock? 11 sounds good. 11 a.m. Easter, Easter, Eastern. Eastern. <laughs> 11 a.m. Eastern, we're gonna do spinning rods for you. We're doing both in the same day. Tim, you wanna kick it off? Sure. Everything he said, uh, you know, <laughs> we, the whole purpose of these buyer's guides is to get you guys uh, the correct stuff, the stuff you want in time for Christmas. So that's why we're going to double up on the videos today. And uh, yeah, we got, I think we got eight casting rods, multiple different brands, and uh, we're going to go one by one. We each picked a couple and uh, I guess I'll start off. First one I want to talk about is the tipless. It used to have a tip. <laughs> Um, it's pouring outside right now. I don't know if you guys know this out here. We are getting like two inches of rain today. Mm -hmm. Um, so it puts a real damper on these, these videos, but I did and, turn the fan off though. That was a good first step. <laughs> so those of you guys that have followed us for, for years, for a long time, you guys know that we've always really liked the Dobbins champion series. Mm -hmm. One of the rods that I still fish today that I haven't found a proper replacement for is the Dobbins 805 CB. This is my 10XD rod. I've tried the 806, lost some big fish. I like the weight, I like the softer tip of the 805. Mm -hmm. Through all the different rod brands, the manufacturers, I still throw, I think both of us still throw mm -hmm. the 805 CB for our DD22s, our deep diving cranks, and our jumbo cranks. Yeah. I paired that up with, uh, I'm really looking forward to putting a lot more time on the water with this reel, but this is the Tranks 200. I like that it's got the oversized handle. When you're crank, when you're when you're grinding all day, it just the more torque with that this reel hat that this reel has and the larger handle just makes it easier on the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so I pair that up with the Tranks. But the 805 to me is a must-have big crank rod. That's a winner, and it's not super expensive. It's in the uh, I think low twos, maybe mid twos. Now. Before I get started here, guys, we're going to link all this down in the video description for you. What we're going to do, because there's, it's random, we're picking these up. They're not in any sort of a price order or a preference order. Uh, we're going to link them all in the video description, but there we will rank them by price, highest to lowest, to make it easier for you to understand how these all lay out and compare to each other. And then we're also going to give you some favorite models, just like Tim just did. We'll link the specific models that really are standouts to us that have made a big difference for us. <laughs> I did the Jesus. same thing, man. It's hard. We're in like this little you know, Matt's office, so it's, it's brutal. That's all right. We, we take the, the hand that we're dealt. I'm talking about the St. Croix. Legend Tournament. This specific model... The Big Cranker is one that I've talked about for years and years and years. I've thrown the Big Cranker now for probably five or six years, caught a ton of fish on it. But the Legend Tournament is a great middle of the road price point rod. What I like about St. Croix, and we've told you this before, is that they tend to be moderate actioned rods. So they tend to bow deeper into the blank than a comparable rod from another brand. There are times when that's not a great thing, but there are a lot of times cranks, topwater, jig fishing, uh, Texas rigging. There's a bunch of applications where that is such a huge advantage to have a rod that has that taper all the way through the blank. You hook those fish up and keep them pinned. So right there in the middle of the price point, the Legend Tournament 
is a killer option. Uh, I paired that one up with a Bantam, which is a higher end reel, uh, but that's been a fun reel for me this year. I've started, I've told you guys before, I do a ton of my cranking on the Aldebaran, which is not designed for it, but I've fallen in love with it for that application. This is another one that I've started throwing more and more and more, and I, who knows, I might even transition to these completely by next year because there are so many finesse applications for my Aldebarans yeah. and I've got them all on my cranking rods right now. Uh, but this is a really, really nice reel to crank with as well. Yeah, I had a hard time finding where that was gonna fit in my lineup because like you said, the Aldebaran is such an awesome lightweight finesse reel, but that that Bantam is just a workhorse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a solid one piece frame, very smooth. It's a little bit heavier, but when you're cranking and stuff, it, it doesn't seem to, to matter. But uh, that is a great reel. I'm gonna go with the Shimano Zodia series. Now this is a line that they came out with a couple years ago and it's a price point, I believe it's $199. Two, um, two, I believe you. It's yeah. somewhere around there. 199, 229, something like that. But the rods, I feel like they should be a little higher price point. This, they're sensitive. You know, they're sensitive. They're light. They come in a lot of great fishing sizes. You know, seven foot two, seven foot four. Those, those types of sizes that I really like fishing. But if you're gonna invest in a little bit higher than like the, the Dobbins Furies or the other rods that we care, we talked about in the the uh, $200 combo buyer's guides. Mm -hmm. That's I a big step. I feel like the next step, a big step, is gonna be up to the Shimano Zodius. I think if, if you already have those rods and you're looking to upgrade and get into this mid-range, this is kind of lower in, uh, in that mid-range, but it doesn't fish like that. So the Shimano Zodius series is a great series to go to. And uh, this is obviously the, the Corrado. Uh, what what, what do you, you say, say about, about this? I, we've, we've talked about it in so many other previous videos. The Corrado K is one of my favorite Corrados ever made. Yeah. The next one I'm gonna talk about is a standout for me. This is something different, um, a Daiwa combo. We told you guys early last year that we were gonna branch out and try everything and find new rods that we liked, or at least try to find new rods that we liked. And if we were successful, we would let you know about it. Uh, so I started throwing the Tatula Elite uh, you probably saw we were doing a bunch of spooning with it this fall, uh, threw underspins on it a whole bunch. I was doing some just pitching with it around docks. Very, very happy with this rod at its price point. Uh, I think it's a great, great mid-range mid rod. Um, I paired it up with the Tatula SV, I think it's a TW, isn't it? SVTW. And you guys have noticed over the years that I throw almost exclusively Shimano casting reels and there's a reason for that and there's a reason you don't see me branch out a whole lot um, One is I grew up with them two. I tried to branch out a few years ago, and I was disappointed um, So I came back and when I came back I became a little bit more diehard about it because I had gone out and tried things uh, This particular reel I really like this particular Daiwa and the reason that you don't see me talking more about Daiwa reels is they all use that, with the higher end reels, the use T -wings. that T-wing that system. There's only a couple models that don't. You guys also know that I'm a braid to leader guy. Heavy braid to leader connection knots don't go through the T-wing. And that's why you don't see me using it more. So you'll notice it's spooled up with fluorocarbon. Spoonin is one of those applications that I love fluoro. So I'm more than happy to use this reel. It's super comfortable. I like the reel a lot. But if I were going to heavy braid, it wouldn't be an option for me. Yeah, it's a it's a cool system the way it opens up and lets the line come out cleaner and freer. But uh, us being braid guys, it's, it's harder to use. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it, it just the the connection not always gets gets caught up. But uh, cool. I'm gonna talk about the IMX Pro. Uh, Loomis came out with this series two years ago, last year, something like that. And I started kind of dabbling in the IMX Pro stuff because it was a little bit cheaper than the GLX stuff that I was buying. I love the GLX stuff. So it was just a, a price point down from there. And what I really like about the IMX Pro, I don't have their whole line, but I feel like they have technique specific rods. Mm -hmm. So if you need a lipless crank or a, uh, a square bell rod, the 845CB, I mean, yeah. that is the rod we throw. 
So if there's so there's certain techniques, their glide bait rod, I really like their glide bait rod. Mm -hmm. uh, their swim bait rod, the 904. Uh, and so, the 966. The 966. Mm -hmm. So there's a handful in that IMX Pro lineup that are they're phenomenal for specific baits. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we kind of graduate into when you start building these collections of rods. You know, we've been <laughs> the rods are doing this for years. <laughs> but uh, you start getting the rod that you like for throwing a Senko. You get you find the rod you want for throwing a large crankbait for a swim bait and you kind of mix match. And I think IMX Pro has a, a handful of rods in that lineup that are phenomenal for technique specific. And we'll go ahead and link those down below as well. But the IMX Pro is a great rod. Again, paired up with a Corrado. You can put a DC on this if you want, depending on the technique that you're doing. But uh, IMX Pro, you guys should take a look at. The next one I'm gonna talk about, Shimano X-Pride. Talked about this rod this spring. We've talked about it a lot. They are almost always out of stock, and I, I wish they weren't. And because it's, it's hard for us to tell you how great something is, and then you can't get it. Uh, and we tend not to do that. But the X-Prides, they come in and out of stock constantly, but you have to, you have to get them fast. Uh, so a lot of people, we've talked about it earlier this month, when, or late last month, when we started the buyer's guide about back ordering gear ahead of time. That's how most people are getting the X-Prides, because when they come in, they're gone. Uh, it's hard for a rod to be on Tackle Warehouse's bestseller list all the time and never be in stock. That says a lot about it. But the X Pride, they come in between 279 and 289. To me, this rod fishes in the 400s. Mm -hmm. uh, it is incredibly sensitive for the price and it is incredibly light. Not not just for, for the, the price. price. Not just for the price. <laughs> right. It hangs with the big dogs in a in a bad way. Uh, this is the rod that we kept alluding to in the high-end video, that we were going to come back around and, and give you some guys some stuff that didn't make it into the high-end video, but hangs with high-end gear. Uh, unfortunately, they're not in stock for the holidays, except I saw that the 7.6 medium heavy is in stock, which is a killer rod. And I saw in the spinning rod, I think it was a 7-foot light plus, which is a killer drop shot rod, are in stock. The rest of them would have to be back ordered. But one really nice thing about the, the Shimano line in general is that the models carry line to line to line and they actually maintain their action. A lot of brands, as you go across the lines, the models are still there, but when you actually get them and play with them side by side, they're not the same rod. Uh, Shimano's done a really good job between the X-Pride and the Zodius and the SLX of actually maintaining action. So if you can get it in an X-Pride, it's incredibly light, incredibly sensitive, probably the best bang for the buck rod that you can get on the market right now. But if you can't get it, you step down a little bit in performance and a little bit in price and you land at the Zodius and you can get the exact same models. Uh, pair this one up with the Corrado DC, which I have been loving lately. Uh, and then same thing there, you know, we have our favorite models. This is probably the number one rod that I'm even fishing with right now. I probably have, when we just go out fishing, I almost always have four or five of them on the deck. They really, I hate to say that when you guys can't even get them right now, but they're, they're really good. But there's a reason for that. Shimano, I don't think they were prepared for how well they were going to sell. I yeah. mean, like you said, it's a Tackle Warehouse bestseller and you can't even get them. <laughs> right. It's, I, I've mentioned it in previous videos. You guys know that I like high-end gear. You know that I'm very particular on the things I use for sensitivity, for the way things feel in my hand. And I'm not going to name any names of any brands, but when I was first introduced to the X-Pride, I picked it up and it was lighter and more sensitive to the rod I had just set down at a way higher price point. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've, I've grabbed as many X-Prides as I could to try them in the different... Uh, I think you and I have tried different ones and we ended up settling on certain ones. Um, they will link you a bunch of those. Yeah, they are like Matt said They my opinion They're the best rod on the market for the price point. They right now. They, yeah, they, they're They should be up in that Like you said Fours. high threes low fours mid four price point range um, And they're not you know, so the X prides if you can get them if you can back order them do it You guys will not I mean you guys will love them. So yeah, you won't regret it the next rod that I'm going to talk about that we couldn't 
put in the high end. It belonged in it the belonged high end video, there. but we had so much high end gear to talk about it didn't end up there. And that's gonna be the GLX series by Loomis. The first the nicest rod I, I the first nice rod I ever bought was a GLX. It was the 852 spinner uh, spinner rod. Cinco rod, and I still have that rod today. I've probably caught a thousand fish on that thing. It's it's lasted, you know, 10, 12, 15 years, however long it's been, and it's still phenomenal. These new GLXs, super light. Like, it's... I remember the first time you pitched one up. You pitched it up onto a um, launch ramp, and I remember looking at your face as you were like, Feeling it bounce <laughs> down, yeah. uh, it, he was. You were tripping. Um, no joke. The first, the first GLX I ever, uh, the new GLX I ever got a couple years ago was the 853, because I've got the 852 and the spinning and the 853 and the casting. I tied on a Carolina rig, and you and I went out fishing, and I was swinging on rocks because it mm. felt like bites. That's how sensitive. That, that was the difference, and so. High-end gear, I don't know how these didn't make it in the high-end gear, but the GLX series, if you can afford to bump up from the IMX Pros or even, there's not a huge difference in the X Prides. I think that they're com comparable. I think maybe the GLXs are, you know, they're a little Just bit lighter, fraction. a little bit more se sensitive. Um, but there's some there's some models in the, in the GLX line that I absolutely love. I've used them for years, and we'll link those down below as well. But I go ahead and... I feel like the the sensitivity of these rods, I go with a lighter reel. I'll go with an Aldebaran or a Kronar, the MGL, the 150 MGL. Um, but phenomenal combo. It should belong in the high-end gear, but it just, we couldn't fit it. But that is the GLX. I mean, they're, they're sweet. All right, last one I'm going to talk about. Dobbins Champion Extreme. And I actually want to point out three models for you. Um, we used to fish a ton of the Champion Extremes, but as we branched out into high-end gear, we find ourselves picking rods from different specific. categories yeah. and getting very specific. And that's why you don't see us using the Champ Extremes as much as we used to. There are three specifically that to me are huge standouts. Even within their own line of rods, they don't fish the same. They are more sensitive than the other rods that surround them. Those three are the 746, the 745, and then the 784. And I actually, if, if, if I were gonna call it, I don't think that the 784 is actually as sensitive as the 745 and 746, but it's so unique that it's a must have. We both still throw it all the time. It's a longer rod. You get that soft tip where you can watch for bites. It's just a very, very special rod. But speaking specifically to sensitivity, the 745 and the 746 are awesome rods. Very, very sensitive for the price. Again, they hang with high dollar rods. Uh, 746 has been, I, I threw the frog on the <laughs> it's, it's super sensitive when you throw the frog on it. <laughs> but also use it as a crossover. So if you're only taking one rod out with you, if you're on the kayak, as an example, or you're bank fishing, and you want a rod that you can throw the frog on, but you can flip, you can throw a jig. You can do a lot of different things with. You can put on uh, a Kitek on a big swim bait hook. You can do all those things with that one model. So even though it's a really heavy actioned rod, you can do so many things with it. So that's what I like about that particular one, the 746. Uh, it's had a place in my arsenal all year. And then again, paired up with a Cronarch MGL. And one thing I'm gonna say about reels, cause we've just kind of been glancing over them. Again, personal opinion. If I could only pick two mid-range reels out as bang for the buck reels, I would go with, for DC, I would go with a Corrado DC. And if you wanna get that high-end feel without buying a super high-end reel, it's the Cronarch MGL. Uh, both of those, I mean, it's, still, the same thing, yeah. it's still a high-end reel, but it's, it's oh. not the high-end. It, yeah, absolutely, yeah. it's high-end reel. Uh, it's a reel that should be at a higher price point. The the casting distance, the smoothness. Uh, sometimes I, I I grab that instead of some of the higher end reels. So right, it's I it's agree. Up there. So 
Guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope it helps you. Again, we're going to organize it all in the video description coming down in price point as you work down the line and we're going to give you favorite models in each one and then here in just a few hours we're going to do spinning combos for you so stick around you get a second video today we're trying to get it in there for you so you guys can still get gear in time for the holidays we appreciate you you want to add anything nope thanks guys stay tuned spinner rods coming up see ya see ya